Chapel. I'm a cosmetic dermatologist in Newport Beach, Orange County, and I'm in my practice. Just finished a day of clinic and wanted to film a quick YouTube video because I'm spontaneous and I just do it on the fly and I like to see what you guys are asking about in my clinic, patients asking me questions and on my comments on YouTube, my Instagram, and a topic that has come up a lot in the recent weeks is iron oxides. So I wanted to do a quick video on iron oxides. What are they? How do we get them? What do they do? Why are they important? So iron oxides are pigment that are usually included in makeup and sunscreens that help block several things other than just UV light. So we all know that UVA and UVB light are the ultraviolet light rays that cause skin aging, photo aging, brown spots, and more importantly, skin cancer. So as a Mohs skin cancer surgeon myself, it's really important that my patients are protected from the UVA1, UVA2, and UVB rays, but we also have to think about nowadays is damage to our skin from environmental pollutants, HEV light, infrared light, blue light from our devices. And especially now more than ever, starting at a young age, kids are exposed to blue light, infrared light, and you know HEV light from their devices. And this can cause premature aging, collagen breakdown, brown spots, melasma at an earlier age, which is concerning. So it's important to protect your skin, of course, from the UVA rays, but also from blue light, HEV light, environmental pollutants, and infrared light as well. So what exactly are iron oxides protecting our skin against? So HEV light and blue light is a light that's emitted from our devices. It's the light that turns your face blue when you're on your laptop or on your phone at night and you see that kind of shearing, um, sheer blue colored light bouncing off your skin. That's HEV and blue light and that can cause brown spots and pigmentation and melasma. So even my patients who I'm treating for melasma who have great control with their you know, skincare um, photo protection and sunscreens, they're still getting melasma flares even though they're not in the sun and they're wearing sunscreens. It's usually from the blue light and the HEV light coming from our phones, our devices, and our tablets. That can cause melasma in and of itself and cause hyperpigmentation. Hot yoga too, warmth and you know uh, increased temperature can also cause melasma. But that's a different video for a different day on the topic of melasma. But um, just to kind of educate you guys, it's the blue light and HEV light that can you know increase the melanogenesis and the melanocyte, which is a pigment producing cell in our skin to make more melanin in response to that blue light and an HEV light. Furthermore, it upregulates collagenase and enzymes like matrix metalloproteinases, which not to get too scientific, but cause collagen breakdown, and that can cause it at earlier age. It causes the skin to fall, it causes wrinkled skin. A loss of collagen, especially at an early age, can cause premature aging. It makes the pores stretch out and look bigger. It causes skin textural irregularities. And so it's really important to protect your skin not only from melasma, brown spots, hyperpigmentation, and dispigmentation, but also from premature aging, fine lines, wrinkles that may not be apparent in your 20s, but in your early 30s and 40s, it'll start instead of happening like it used to decades past when people weren't exposed to blue light and HEV light at an early age, they would start to get fine lines and wrinkles later, you know, like in their late 40s and 50s. So now it's something to consider. And, you know, people ask me all the time, Dr. Kappel, do you wear sunscreen at night? And honestly, sometimes I do. If I work out at night and I'm in the gym and there's fluorescent lights, if I'm going to be on my laptop or my iPad, sometimes I do wear sunscreen at night because of the iron oxide protection. Now, do I expect my patients to do that? No, I'm super OCD and I'm a dermatologist and I'm dedicated and obsessed with skin my whole life. So I don't, you know, as, you know, expect my patients to take it to that level, but maybe having like a blue light protector on your tablets or your phones or making sure that you're wearing iron oxides during the day to protect you during that time where you're having that interface and interacting with HEV and blue light is really important. Okay, infrared light. Now what is infrared light? Infrared light is light that's not, it's in the electromagnetic spectrum, but it's not in the visible light range. It's more heat that gets emitted from devices that can also cause volume loss, collagen breakdown, as well as loose, saggy skin when you're older. So iron oxides also protect from infrared radiation to the skin as well. And the last thing that I wanna talk about is environmental pollutants. So unfortunately in today's world, we have more of an exposure to environmental pollutants than we have in the years past. It's a sad and honest truth, but environmental pollutants, what they do is they can cause free radicals in the skin. Free radicals are deleterious or harmful to the skin for many different reasons. First, it can increase the enzymes that we talked about, the matrix metalloproteinases, collagenase. It causes inflammation of the skin, which can make inflammatory dermatoses go crazy, your rosacea, your seborrheic dermatitis, your psoriasis, all those inflammatory dermatologic diseases can flare. It can also cause premature aging by mechanisms in which we just spoke about, breaking down your collagen fibers, breaking down your elastin fibers, all those structural support proteins are in your dermis, your particular dermis, and your papillary dermis that gives your smooth, tight texture 
texture to the skin gets lost and the skin starts to get texturized, wrinkly, crepey, large pores, acne scars become more apparent as you lose these dermal matrix proteins and they get broken down when coming in contact with environmental pollutants. So on the topic of environmental pollutants, the other thing that can cause it in the skin is increased free radicals, which can also bounce around in the skin and can damage the effects of the skincare products that we spend a lot of money on to do a lot of overall, overall, you know, uh, rejuvenation of the skin. So free radicals can destabilize your vitamin C's, your um, retinoic acid, your peptides, your growth factors, your ceramides, your glucosaminoglycans, your hydrators, everything that you're putting on your skin can get broken down when free radicals are being um, stimulated by you know, the signal transduction cascades that happen when environmental pollutants um, come in contact with the skin. So that's another reason why our iron oxides are so important. How do we get iron oxides on our skin to protect ourselves every day? So if you're using a sunscreen, like I love Color Science, I have it available on my website, MDR, which is my personal skincare line as well. Um, you can also find it online in a lot of uh, medical practices and dermatology practices, and it's, you know, it's readily available online. Color Science is one of the leaders in science and technology in the skin sunscreen space. It's a mineral-based sunscreen. They usually have zinc oxide, titanium dioxide, and they also contain iron oxides in all of their products, and they go through extensive of research and studies to not only study the protection from UVA1, UVA2, UVB rays, but also environmental pollutants, infrared light, HEV light, blue light, all of the things that we have to worry about. Um, uh, Skin Better Science has amazing sunscreens, um, Tizo, uh, there's a lot of iron oxides in sunscreens, especially medical grade sunscreens, and I'll do a whole different sunscreen video because sunscreens is a, is a whole topic in and of itself, but right now we're focused on iron oxides, which I need to stay on task and on topic because I can go off on a tangent very easily because my brain just goes too fast and I get too excited about dermatology. But um, I think it's really important to look at the company that you're getting your sunscreen from. Now, if there's a sunscreen that you know and you love and you've been using consistently and it agrees with your skin and you get good coverage but it doesn't have iron oxides in it but you want to add iron oxides to your skincare regimen, then you know I've seen dermatologists post on YouTube, oh, well, then just get a makeup that has iron oxides in it and it should be fine. And that should be fine. I mean, it's better than nothing, but I'm a very science-based, evidence-based provider and doctor. So I would say maybe use the sunscreen that you know and love that agrees with your skin and maybe find another sunscreen that has iron oxides in it that may not be the best sunscreen for, you know, photo protection against UVA and UVB rays as well. But if all else fails, you know, you can always rely on iron oxides in your makeup. But I do encourage you guys to give a medical grade skincare or even a sunscreen that you know and love that has an iron oxide in it because that's usually better. And the formulation of sunscreens, whether it be titanium titanium dioxide, zinc oxide, mixed with the iron oxides actually can augment the um, potency for the protection and coverage against all the things that we're talking about that can be damaging to the skin. So that's the topic for today. I try to keep it short and concise and just packed full of useful information. Be sure to subscribe and follow and share this video with anyone who may find it useful. And thank you guys so much for following. I'll keep dropping derm knowledge each week and I'll keep up with my shorts, which is really, really fun. So I can take you guys around with me in clinic on my day-to-day -day life too. But I'm here to answer your questions and respond to the comments. And again, subscribe and hit the notification bell. I love you guys.